get ready for the 2017 Howard University homecoming. Oh, Howard, we sing of thee. That's coming up right now on The Rock Newman Show. Welcome to the Rock Newman Show from the campus of historic Howard University, located in the nation's capital. I'm Rock Newman, and it is my desire to inspire you with personal stories of extraordinary achievement. We're counting down to Howard's homecoming with a look at HU Sports. Football head coach Mike London and director of athletics Kerry Davis are here to discuss plans for the homecoming game, Howard's big win against UNLV, and the future of sports at the Mecca. Kerry, I'd like to welcome you here today. Rock, my man. Thank How you so much. Coach Mike London. Good seeing you. Thank Thanks you. Thank Thanks you for joining us. And the posse that you brought along here, we got some players, we've got some cheerleaders, we've got some old heads. <laughs> it's homecoming week, and we're about to celebrate. All, All right. right. All right. Again, thank you for joining the Rock Newman Show. Um, I, I've got to start. I've got to start with the first game of the season. And, Coach, I think I'll come to you. Um, you obviously were someone that uh, the institution felt as if it were uh, really getting a jewel to be able to bring you on as head coach of the university. You have had tremendous success in the past, including a national championship, uh, including being on the staff of, you know, major institutions. So you come in and you start developing a program, doing what you do. Uh, I heard one of your players say that there was a mantra, and that was focus on UNLV. That was the first game of the season. Tell me a little bit about what you as a coach did to try to prepare your team to travel cross country, go to UNLV, one of the bigger schools, and to have an idea that they could compete. Sure, it all starts with the, the player's mindset. When I first got there, the first thing I did, I, I met with every player for, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 minutes. We talked about what their strengths were, and, and we talked about what the deficiency were. And, and what I learned, there was a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a bunch of young men that wanted to achieve on the field, in the classroom, in the community. That kind of lined up with what I believe in anyway. So we talk about a mindset, change, you know, changing a culture. We talk about standards. Our standards are go to class, show class, and treat people with dignity and respect. It wasn't football talk. It was just about who they were, what they wanted to be, all the things that they could be outside of just being a football player. So we got to that point. We started talking about mission possible kind of being our statement about, you know what, if you measure – from goal line to goal line at Green Stadium and measure goal line to goal line at Maryland, Michigan, even at UNLV, still 100 yards. And so all that matters is what happens between the white lines. And so our, our approach was just taking care of ourselves. Um, maybe a lot of people out there didn't you know, believe in what was going on. or As in no one. Uh, no as, one. As yeah. in no one outside of those lines at Green Stadium <laughs> believed that you had any chance. Yeah, you know, it's a, it, it was a – at first, kind of a we, ours, and us, us mentality and approach that the only ones that can change the fortunes are the ones that have, uh, have, have bought into us, you know, Dr. Frederick, Kerry, and, and a lot of su supporters and, st and stakeholders, but the players themselves. The only way we change things is we change our outcomes. And so um, there's a dedicated group of seniors that, that were here. Uh, we recruited some young players that came in and said, you know what, we, 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 we believe in the vision. And so... As the, as the game opportunities start to get closer and closer, we start practicing uh, with the mindset that we're not going to take, you know, a, a second fiddle to anybody. And um, 
leading up to it was, uh, you know, the, the opportunity, the experience, the flight out there, where we stayed. Um, it was, was, was a great experience, and obviously the game w was something that um, will be cherished. One of the, probably one of the better moments of my, my, my coaching career because it was from people or a group that people said this will never happen mm -hmm. to experiencing and watching the joy um, and the elation and the pride and the excitement it had brought to all the stakeholders at Howard to seeing that through. And so it was, it was truly a, an, an accomplishment from, from a lot of people, but particularly the players. Okay. I, I'm going to come back to the game. You mentioned that we, I mentioned that we had, you know, some supporters here. There's a group, got uh, several players over there, several, again, former players. Uh, one of them is a senior. And I'd like to have you stand up, sir. This is television, so it's not like it's radio and folks can't see you. So folks are going to see you here and all around the world. And this is your senior, Mr. Warren. Who's six foot four, 280, 280 pounds? Thank you. I just want I just wanted my audience to know that uh, Howard University has some real horsepower here. No, notice he's wearing a really really tight jersey, so yeah. all their muscles are uh -huh. showing. Uh -huh. I see. All I of see. them, all full. Oh, that's, them like, uh, that's not lost on us at all here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so Kerry, um, Kerry, Kerry Davis. Kerry Davis is a former very very senior executive at Time Warner and HBO. Um, um, you came to Howard University, uh, Dr. Frederick, and I, I've got to call, I've got to call his name here. Dr. Frederick had the, the, the insight, the initiative, the tenacity to seek you out and to talk to you about coming here and leading the athletic program, leading the athletic program at a time when it was very arguably at one of its lowest ebbs. So I want to ask you a couple of questions. One, what was it that convinced you that this was the right thing for you to do, to come into a program that was at such a low ebb when you had just left a mountaintop in your career? I know some folks said, Kerry, are you crazy? What are you doing? Uh, what was it that made you come here? And then the second part to my question is, I want to hear some of your vision. Well, the, the, the first thing, and you, you're right, uh, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of uh, people I call my very close friends looked at me like I had absolutely lost my mind for even considering it. I mean, right. that, you know, there were television opportunities where I had to, which I was supposedly leaving for. Uh, and when this opportunity came up, uh, it was intriguing to me. And the main reason it was intriguing to me is because I always felt that Howard was a jewel. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it, was a, it was a diamond, if you will, in the rough from the standpoint of it's a great academic institution with a great legacy. And there was no reason I thought it couldn't be like schools like Butler, mm -hmm. like Georgetown, mm -hmm. like Duke, mm -hmm. right, who use their academic reputation to enhance and attract athletes to their program, mm -hmm. and then in return, the athletic program enhanced the academic reputation of the school. Mm -hmm. right, um, and in my first conversation with Dr. Frederick, I'll never forget it, it actually occurred around 11.30 at night. <laughs> I got a, I got a, so mm -hmm. I said, okay, first of all, this is obviously a hardworking president mm -hmm. who's calling me at 11.30 mm -hmm. at night. I don't think the man right, ever sleeps. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and and, and he, then one of the things he said to me is, why can't we be Georgetown? Yeah. Why can't we be Butler? He, yeah. he used the schools yeah. that I was thinking of, and I said, you know what, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that was, so that was, I don't think I would have done this at any other school but Howard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had gotten a call a few years back uh, when Gramlin was looking for an AD. I had gotten a call a few years back when Rut Rutgers was looking for an AD. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them, you know, was, was going to entice me to leave, you know, the most successful television company at that time in the world, yeah. <laughs> right? So, yeah. uh, but th that, there was something that was intriguing about this. And for me, it was an opportunity to legacy build for myself. Mm -hmm. If this was going to be my final business chapter, if you will, um, what, a great, what a great chapter in my life uh, to work at a school uh, that has meant so much to African Americans and even my own personal growth. You know what? I'm going to stay right here and talk about Kerry Davis for a second, um, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, you left 
HBO in 2014. And you were, as I said, in the hierarchy, the highest hierarchy of the sports department. When I was a yeah, senior vice president. Senior vice president. And since that time, HBO Sports has tanked. You said that, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, um, when, a, when a player gets traded from a team, there's always the question of, do they still want that team to do well? Do they find a, a measure of satisfaction in saying, well, if I was still there, you'd have been doing better. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. That's an interesting question. First of all, I, I still want HBO to do well. I'm a major stockholder. <laughs> I got, you know, when I left, they gave me a lot of uh, stock options. And okay. so, so sure, I want uh -huh. Time Warner and uh -huh. HBO to do very well. There's some, well. Inducement. <laughs> There's some <laughs> inducements for you. Exactly. I'm rooting for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, and, and also, I still have a lot of friends there. I yeah. mean, and I don't consider my departure in a vacuum. I, you know, they, they basically replaced the entire senior staff, myself, Ross mm -hmm. Greenberg, Mark Taffet, mm -hmm. uh, and I thought the three of us had worked very hard and very well uh, maintaining HBO's position in the sports wor world as the, you know, the, the, the primary storyteller in television. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we certainly had enough Emmys to prove it. Mm -hmm. and also uh, the, the leader in the boxing franchise. Mm -hmm. And we certainly had enough awards in that category to prove that as well. So, the, um, so it wasn't just my leaving. It mm -hmm. was, uh, it was a depart departure of all of that senior staff, mm -hmm. I will. So I, I, don't, I, w I would never take any credit for, you know, for that alone. That being said, um, you know, I still have a lot of friends there. Mm -hmm. I, wish them, I wish them well. Mm -hmm. Every now and then I'll call up and say, hey, guys, you know, you know, I, I know you don't. There's no reason to listen to me, but yeah. you know, you, you may, you know, you may want to think about X. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, but you know, the, it's certainly a com it's complicated when things like that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, a very gracious answer. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so now you 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 come into Howard University. Um, clearly, one of the uh, one of the ways it seems that it lined up between you and Dr. Frederick that you both were very concerned about athletics and academics, and, and academics being very critical to athletics. You're a Harvard grad. No, Dartmouth. I'm sorry, Dartmouth, uh, Ivy League. Right. Um, so tell us about, if you can, the mission, the, the vision, if you will, that Dr. Frederick talked with you about in terms of athletics, combining athletics with academics. Well, one of the things that, that, that happened, and Dr. Frederick is, is, is all about, anyone who knows him knows how important he believes academics are yeah. uh, and, and in terms of the legacy of Howard. Uh, and one of the things that when we first had started having our initial discussions and looking at the, 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 the athletic programs, we had five teams under APR sanctions. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, and so my Eight under uh, under, uh, if you will ac consider it academic probation. Okay, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a shorthand way. Sure. I don't want to go into that. All right, so uh, so we had five teams that that were under ac uh, academic probation. So the first thing, as as we were talking, I said, well, if our vision is that we're going to use academics to enhance our athletic program and vice versa, then we have to be who we say we are. Mm -hmm we have to be that academic institution. Yeah. Now he's working on that and he's done a tremendous job of working on that across the university, uh, you know, befitting our, rank, you know, our growth in the rankings in U.S. News and World Report. Mm -hmm. But the ac athletic program also had to reflect that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was one of the first things uh, we, we got to work on yeah. is making sure, and we replaced the academic and the compliance staff to make sure that we were who we said we were from an academic standpoint, mm -hmm. before we did anything else athletically. Mm -hmm. There's so much, Coach, I want to talk to you about. Before I come back to you, I want to uh, see if we can get the microphone over to Bruce Williams here in the red shirt. Bruce came into Howard University in 1970, graduated in 1974, uh, kicked around the NFL for just a little bit, and then went on to become a business titan. Bruce is now president of the Bison Express. Bruce, tell us about the mission of the Bryson Express and what kind of uh, difference you see um, in terms of interest and enthusiasm having Kerry to come on 
and then with Coach London coming in. Uh, Rock, thank you. Uh, Bison Express is the booster club for all of Howard University athletics. We're organized and chartered by the university to fulfill that mission for, for the university. So the, one of the ways I could tell that we're progressing, and you asked what, what is the interest in the athletic program, is membership is up 1,000% in the last couple of years. Part of that is due to that's sure, that's sure heading in the right direction. Absolutely, up absolutely. a thousand percent. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then the other is the amount of contributions we're getting across the alumni that we have. Mm -hmm. So not just former athletes, but in general, people who have gone to Howard who have said, "I'd like to give back now." So we've done that. I think the partnership between Bison Express and the athletic department and the bond that we have, that we're in sync. So we follow Kerry's lead, we support the mission of athletics, and we're contributing across the board with dollars for infrastructure for all of the programs. For example, I'll give you one small example. Last year, the softball team wanted to get a start. We had a bad winter. They wanted to go and play in the warmth. They raised some money. We provided the other funds so that they could go to Puerto Rico and play and practice, and the result was is I think they they you know probably had a threefold number of wins last year. And those are the kinds of things that Bison Express does uh -huh. for the university. Uh -huh. So yeah, I think it's partnership with the athletic department, it's partnership with the coaches, and what we want to do is to provide an environment for all of our student athletes to thrive in, to have the right infrastructure, the right support system for them to excel on the field, on the court. Uh, in any adventure that they have in the swimming pool, we want all across the board, we want all of our athletics to do well. And we also support the cheerleaders and we provide uniforms for them as well as the uh, marching band. Sitting next to Bruce is uh, 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 Haywood Corley, a former member of the same team that Bruce played on. And down here, this older gentleman over here on the corner, uh, that's Bill Ritchie. Bill Ritchie, as, we, as much as we've been able to determine, was Howard University's first uh, track All-American uh, he ran 9-4. He was uh, a phenom on the track team in the late 60s and going into the early 70s. He later became chief of the D.C. Uh, police. He was a detective, chief of homicide. Um, I asked him one day um, if anyone had ever committed a crime and tried to run from him. <laughs> he caught them. There was someone who did who caught them. Bill, thanks, thanks for showing up today. Um, Coach, if I can come back to you, you have been around a lot of successful programs. You won a national championship at Richmond. You were at the University of Maryland, uh, which was a, you know, a, a big program. Um, what was it that enticed you to come to Howard, which again, many would have thought was, you know, he'd say, hey, I'm on the come up. Well, they would have thought that it was on the step down. What was it that enticed you to do so? You know, we, uh, I've been coaching for a while, and, and all of us stand on the shoulders of somebody else that, through influence, um, have helped us get to where, you know, we go in our profession. And guys like um, Tyrone Willingham, Ron Dickerson, Tony Dungy, you know, I've had a chance to follow them, see them, and try to emulate some of the things in terms of core values that, that they have. So it's the third time being a head coach, um, head coach at a Power 5 school. As you said, winning the national championship at Richmond, being an ACC coach of the year at Virginia, coaching the NFL. And so the time in my career when, when Kerry first called me and we started talking about it, first of all, he, he called me and he's like, um, I thought he was using me as a kind of a guy that was kind of give advice and things like that. I didn't know that he was prepping me for, uh, uh -huh. you know, for the <laughs> <That's when laughs> yeah. slick New York. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. So, you know, we started talking about vision once again and, and about the term student athlete, what it means. And all the schools I've been at, the Richmond's, William & Mary's, Boston College, Virginia, are schools of, you know, that, of higher academic learning. And so the vision was very, very similar in that it's important for me that they become educated men, mm -hmm. that – the words NFL also stand for not for long. And so, you know, to in inspire and, and, and try to get guys to understand that you're going to be a husband, a father, an employee, an employer, or CEO of a company mm -hmm. much longer when you'll be in the NFL, 
it's critically important. So we started talking about those things, and and at the point of my career where I'm at, um, I've been very, I've been blessed, truly yeah. blessed, yeah. And, and, it, and it's an honor to be, um, for someone to ask about, hey, the same vision aligns with the president of the university, aligns with the athletic director, and a lot of the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, I'm at the point in my career where it's time for me to, for somebody else to stand on my back and me to lift a hand up. Mm -hmm. My son is on the staff here. I, uh, my, I'm from Hampton, Virginia. Uh, my wife's mother's from Newport News, Virginia. So in this profession, you can't be around your extended family as much as you think you can because you go where the jobs are. Yeah. And this is an opportunity where my extended family, the values match. Um, I love these players that are over my left shoulder here and the rest of the team, um, you know, committed to their development as, as men, as, as, as people that are influential in, in the community. And so those things just kind of just kind of hit. And then, and then finally, you know, after going back and forth with Kerry, you know, I thought I was just kind of being, a, you know, helping, you know, uh, an advisor or something like that. And he said, well, how about you? How about you taking a job? <laughs> and so he'd already laid the groundwork yeah. and everything that made sense, you uh -huh. know, to me. And, um, mm -hmm. and I said, yes. And, and you, you know, you got to be where your feet are, you know, fully committed to the cause. Mm -hmm. And like I said, go to class, show class, and treat people with dignity and respect. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a product of a 30-year Air Force retired vet. I'm a former police officer, police detective uh -huh. myself. Okay. You know, so okay. uh, just a lot of things just kind of resonated with being – in a place and an environment that embraces who I am already. So uh, it was it was an easy decision. I've known Kerry's wife for a long time. And that form of seduction that you just talked about is the same <laughs> it's the same thing I heard that he, that he might have practiced long time ago with Samantha. <laughs> um, Old school. <laughs> uh, set up. Um, so so Kerry, there's there's so much for us to talk about here. Um, this is a celebratory time. This is this is homecoming week, um, and it clearly it clearly has been validated. Whether it's in about Drake song or Biggie song or whatever, ain't no party like a H.U. homecoming party. So that's what's about to go down uh, this 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 week here. Before we get into the homecoming game, and don't think for a second I'm not going back to the UNLV game, Kerry. I want to talk to you, um, to have you to opine, your old employer, HBO, uh, uh, with Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, recently did a piece, and it talked about, and I think the, the, the thread was that HBCUs allow themselves to be abused and allow their players to be abused and hurt for the sake of money when they go and play against the big school. They even called it money games. So I'd like for you to, you know, share your thoughts about the Gumble piece. And yeah, just please, your, your thoughts about that. You know, you know, it's funny, real sports almost operates at HBO as an entity in and of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there was many times when, even when I, worked there as head of programming, right, that they would do a story and that story would anger me or that story, which I would say, hey, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're doing a story that's anti, you know, one of, the, one of the fighters that I'm negotiating to try to sign or mm -hmm. you're, you know, so they, so they operate, uh, you know, under their own, uh, you know, under their own uh, power, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, I, I did get a call from the executive producer a couple of days prior to the airing of the show and he told me what the show was was going to be about and, and I, I can tell you it angered me uh, to no end. Why uh, so? First of all they made it a black issue. They made it a minority issue. They talked about its HBCUs that are going out doing these quote-unquote money grabs by playing these guarantee games. But the, the, but the reality is that all FCS schools, or what you would call subdivision, the second level, mm -hmm. the second tier of football schools, mm -hmm. play those type of games for money. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's, you know, you know that, that happens all the time. I'm sure, Coach, you, you played those games when you were at Richmond. You know, mm -hmm. the, 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 those games are played frequently. Uh, and yes, the, the, the money is used to, in effect, subsidize the operations of the football program. Sure. I get it. 
but it's no, it's not fair to say that that's only a black issue. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, our a lot of our team looks forward to the opportunity, right, to play at a Maryland mm -hmm. or to play at a UNLV, mm -hmm. right, where they can, where they know there'll be scouts there, where they can showcase their talent. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, a guy like Anthony Filio, I'll, I'll bring his name up for example. When we were playing Rutgers last year, I think he had a hundred plus yards in the first half yeah. and pancaked one of the Rutgers linebackers. Yeah. Right, that you know, if I were a pro scout, I, I would look at that and say, oh "Boy, mm -hmm. that kid can play." Mm -hmm. Right, so it was an opportunity for our our young men. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought it was short-sighted, uh, uh, and actually, I told him I thought it was racist. Uh, oh, short-sighted and, and, and racist. racist. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was. It was not was well researched. How was that received? Uh, the, you know, it, I, I can't go into who said what from mm -hmm. back from from their side, but I, I will say this much: that um, you know, I think the 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 people and the the people in power, the senior people there, know I'm a pretty straight shooter, yeah. uh, and I wasn't doing this based on my own uh, Howard bias, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, in effect, you know, th they even said it on the show. They, they taped that show a week after we had just beaten UNLV. Mm -hmm. right, that, you know, the show aired a week later. Right. right and no mention. Uh, no, they did mention okay. it. They okay. mentioned it in the wrap-up with Bryant. Uh -huh. And the, the producer said, oh, that's an outlier. Uh -huh. I said, well, those outliers happen all the time because A&T well, just you know beat what? another speaking, team. <laughs> speaking, speaking of an outlier, and I don't even know how I missed that last piece that you, where you said that they mentioned it. it. Might have been the puppy's fault. But, but speaking of an outlier, they used an example of someone getting injured um, running into a kicker yes, and made that sort of a, 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 a spoke in the wheel of them trying to tell that story. Well, that, that's, that's, that's why I, was, I, I thought it was a completely biased piece. I mean, again, it was, it was a, uh, a, a wrap-up of a game. Uh, the, the, I can't remember which team it was. Um, uh, they put in one of their walk-on players. Mm -hmm. right, it was a 150-pound kid. Mm -hmm. And that 150-pound young man had a collision with the kicker uh, on the FBS level school. Mm -hmm. right? uh, the kicker weighed 190, 200 pounds at most. Mm -hmm. right? That kind of collision could have happened with you know in practice mm -hmm. with a guy on his own team i'm sure there there are 230 or 40 pound kids on his own team mm -hmm. so again to make it seem like well that only happened because you know two different levels of schools were playing mm -hmm. right uh was unfair and again uh, i thought completely biased and, and I, I'm, I was actually surprised uh, uh, by I actually the level of sensitivity that the coach piece had. A, as a coach um, who obviously has, has been around the block your thoughts on that I, I've been a head coach at an FCS level where you do play an FBS school mm -hmm. and, and, and and won the game um, mm -hmm. you know and I've been on the other side of it too where, where you're FBS school and, and you, you you schedule some you know FCS team that you think that's going to kind of be a cakewalk for you yeah. and you know and, and been very competitive in those games. So, you know, to me, uh, the opportunity for to go to UNLV, we went to Kent State right. and then, you know, had a chance in the fourth quarter to yes. drive and tie the score for yeah. them. So, yeah. you know, it's the opportunities that are presented. Uh, it does provide a financial uh, opportunity for the athletic department or for the football program. But these guys are competitors. Yeah. I mean, we lift, we, we train, we do everything that any FBS school does. Mm -hmm. The difference is the number of scholarships. Mm -hmm. You know, and in some, in some places, the enormous amount of resources that they may have. But, you know, we're all wearing the same, you know, equipment, you know, yeah. our desires, our skill levels, yeah. things like that are, are, are of a competitive nature. So I will, you know, we've always looked to play an FCS or FBS school, depending upon you know where I'm. So since I'm here, mm -hmm. you know we we've got scheduled FBS schools. Yeah. And you know to to do to do a story like that, it appears to me that the that that those that would put something together like that truly don't understand the mindset of a gladiator. S truly don't understand the mindset of someone who is willing to compete, who has who have understood and been taught from the time they first walked on the field with Pop Warner, they put their pants, they pull their pants up same the way. same way that we do. And it's almost a, a, a it's like a, a, it's like a fear-based approach that doesn't have a place in competitive sports, you know? Now, I'm certainly not an advocate 
for going out and, you know, getting, you know, people who might not be prepared or undersized or whatever slaughtered. But again, you, as you say, you've been on both sides of the coin where you had a team that wasn't supposed to win and they did. And perhaps, you know, and you know plenty of times that there are major schools that pick a patsy like UNLV did in 2017, but the patsy didn't show up. Some players showed up. So let's go to the UNLV game. Um, you're there. You know universally that the experts, the odd makers, the bookies, and everybody else have you as a 43 point, was 41, 43, 43 point underdog. A 43 point underdog. That's six and a half touchdown underdog. When you marched out of the tunnel, when you went out on the field, did you think you could win that game? Definitely, without a doubt. You know, we, we, we didn't run out on the field. If you notice, we locked arm in arm and we walked out on the field. I mean, so the mindset again, this is going to be a collaborative effort. We know we had some fans there, some great supporters there. But we know we were be inundated with their crowd. It was their, you know, their, their first game, home game. And so it was, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a pageantry that it was in of, in of itself. And so, but, you know, people forget that a football game is getting ready to get played. And, and so the way we train, all this thing led up to from the summer. Um, I can tell right now that one of the things that, that I know that's changed uh, the complexion or the course of the program as we move forward is the ability for guys to go to summer school. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a significant uh, you know, issue because if you're in summer school, you're taking some classes, you're boosting your GPA, mm -hmm. um, you are, uh, your strength and conditioning coach is, is around you. Mm -hmm. and, and so it provides an opportunity as you go into your, your, your preseason camp mm -hmm. that you're bigger, you're faster and stronger. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the, the, the mismatches of who you're playing at FBS school sometimes is minimized, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I just knew from the, from the standpoint that, you know, they didn't have a lot of film on us because we were a new team, yeah. our schemes and our systems. Yeah. But I knew that those guys right there, that they'd run through a wall and play anybody. And, and so as the game played out, the ups and downs, the highs and lows, you know, we were, you know, we were fortunate enough to win. And, and watch that celebration yeah. was... Uh, well, you know, horrific. before we get to the celebration for the win, I really kind of want to get into that game a little bit. Uh, I want to get into the game, uh, and we can, we can kind of move forward uh, past the, the, the first half and to come out um, and where... Again, this team, if they, the, the sense was, oh, the first half was competitive. UNLV took you guys too lightly. That was kind of the conventional wisdom, you know. And now the second half is coming, get ready for the slaughter. Again, I'm talking about mindset and I'm talking to people on the phone and being called and got friends and said, hey, man, you know, they're making a game out of this thing. And, 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 and diehard lovers and supporters of Howard University Athletics were resigned that that's what's happening in the first half. They'll get the butts cut, kick, kicked in the second half. And so it was a bit of seesaw. So let me ask you, during the game, during your in-game coaching and communicating with your staff and players, were there points where, you know, once again you went up and then you and LV went up? Did you go to individual players? Did you go to individual staff players? What were you doing as the kid, as the head coach, to keep everybody focused on the goal to win the game? You know, during a competitive game, it's a seesaw back and forth. And as you said, but one of the things was on the sideline, our sideline. Like again, these guys behind me were talking about, coach, we got this. It was it was amazing the amount of of uh, of uh, just not only pride but just confidence. You know, confidence is, is, is gained through demonstrated performance. So that first half, and as we were going up and, and they got, took the lead and we came back, you know, through the performance of these guys aren't gladiators. They aren't any better than, you know, than what we are, mm -hmm. but given the opportunities that we execute like we need to. So it was more of the players saying, Coach, we got this. It was, it was unbelievable. And I think that we speaks to the mindset of now, where we are now. You know, we've played, you know, in, in six games. Um, and in all those games in the fourth quarter, We've scored points. We've played better, and um, 
and that's kind of the mindset now. It's a, it's a mission possible mindset. It's a can-do mindset. Mm -hmm. You take that on the field, you take it off the field. You mm -hmm. take it with you wherever you go. And so when you're building a culture or changing a culture like that, these guys believe they can win everywhere. Last week, you know, it was, it, you know, it was, it was tied up. And before, you know, they were, they were on the one-yard line or whatever, getting ready to go in. Ball bounces. One of our guys picks it up and runs back for a touchdown. Yeah. We go up 17-10. That's the kind of mindset that you have instead of like, oh, here we go again. Every time yeah. something negative happens. Yeah, yeah. You just mentioned something. Uh, someone that knows a little bit about sports. Uh, it, it, yes, it, you do, Captain. Oh, by the way, I don't <laughs> know if the, I don't know if the cameras have shown it or not. But here's my letter sweater over here hanging up. I was going to wear it, but I think it's shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> or something happened from 44 years ago where. It wasn't necessarily comfortable when I tried to put it off. The dry clean applied that Krispy Kreme to mix <laughs> on it. That's what happened. <laughs> um, you said playing hard and competing well in the fourth quarter. That does not happen without training and conditioning from day one. So testaments and hats off to you for, for that happening. Something else I want to talk about going going back to that game. Um, obviously, there had to be an all hands on deck effort. Your big tackle, your wide receivers, the cheerleaders. I mean, this was an all hands on deck effort. Everybody on this team putting their shoulders to the wheel. So everybody de deserves credit. Something um, what got talked about most was Cam Newton's little brother, Caitlin Newton, uh, Caitlin Newton. Um, it, you know, it was really interesting to see a freshman play with the kind of composure that he played with and the kind of what seemed to be on-field leadership. Can you talk a little bit about your quarterback? Sure. Uh, you know, he, uh, obviously, the, the name and the, where he comes from and the ability to have an instant resource is, uh, is something he, he enjoys. But um, very humble young man, very competitive. You know, he's earned the trust of our, of our, our guys, our coaches, our players. Um, he's... Uh, He's one of the hardest working guys, you know, that, you know, that I know, yeah. particularly at the position. He's always in the office, you know, watching film. Yeah. And so he's adopted the culture. You know, guys like, you know, Howard Warren and, yes. and Trayvon Hunt, these guys yes. back there, guy, yeah. you know, CW back there. They're, they're guys that are older guys mm -hmm. that also adopted mm -hmm. the new culture. Mm -hmm. And so the synergy between taking older guys who whatever experiences they've had before and saying we're going to adopt this new culture mm -hmm. and this new staff and this new coach and taking a younger guy and saying this is what we're going to be mm -hmm. then uh, that that makes for you know kind of a, a a bond that we talked about you know this whole mission possible thing we ours and us um, all that matters is what happens between the white lines on a football field whether you're at Gwynn Park High School or mm -hmm. Green Stadium all mm -hmm. that matters is what you do between the you know the lines and they're all 100 yard 100 yard fields so I, I, like I said, it's, it's, it's more than, I can't describe it. It's a mindset when you come in our meetings yeah. on Friday nights when we're talking, you know, getting ready to play games in, in the locker room before a game at halftime, it's a whole different culture and mindset. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, maybe you need to talk to one of the players about describing it, but that, that's, that's an impetus towards, towards competing, towards competing in everything we do. And, and they know after practice yesterday, some guys didn't go to class. We spent some time with some extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. like rolling, like rolling <laughs> about 100 yards for not going to class. Uh -huh. You know, so those things are, are the constant message that's going to be talked about here, a can-do attitude. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh, 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 Mr. Ritchie, uh, since you're the fleet-footed one, can you hand the mic down to our wide receiver right here? Um, you said talk to one of the players about the mindset. One, um, and your classification now, I'm a senior, sir. I'm a senior. Huh? I'm a senior, sir. Uh, and, and what's your name? Uh, Guy Lemonier. Yeah. Okay. So, two things. Um, the mindset that he's talking about, from a player's perspective, can you tell us uh, what's 
what you feel different about this coach and these than this time versus past years? We knew from coming in from day one when him coming in, it was about showing class, going to class, treat people with dignity and respect, and the mission was possible. Whatever he said, we did, and we knew we could, we could accomplish anything we could. You know, it's often been said that the greatest actor always has his greatest performance when he gives himself to the director. So I think I, I, I hear you saying you guys are giving yourself up to this guy's leadership. Absolutely. We know that um, we wouldn't be successful without him, and, and we won't. We won't do anything without him. So okay. we know we just hand him the ball. We do what he say, and he trusts us to get it done. Okay. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but since I got you on the spot, let me, let me ask you this. You're a senior, and you're going downfield, and when you, it's time for you to catch the ball, it's being thrown to you by a freshman. How much confidence do you have that that freshman quarterback is going to do what you need to get done? to be able to pull it in? 100% confidence. I mean, we don't really call him a freshman. We call him our quarterback, and we know he's going to get it done. We work. He, we, stay out the, we stay out the practice. Before practice, we do what we have to do. We don't, we tell him all the time he don't got time to be a freshman. We're trying to win right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I was at the UNLV game. I mean, uh, at the uh, um, North Carolina Central game, game that you guys lost. Um, when he threw the touchdown pass in the second quarter. I thought I saw in that particular play truly the future of Howard University football because folks were flying by him. I mean, they were, they, they were on him, they were after him, and there was a cool, calm, collected, guy that stayed focused and then let it rip 40 so yards downfield under ultimate pressure. Actually not what you see often from freshman quarterbacks. So with him in that position, talk to me a little bit about how you feel about the future of football at Howard University. Sure. Um, you, you mentioned North Carolina Central game. I got a nervous <laughs> tick in my eye because you started mentioning that. But uh, <laughs> um, that was one of those situations where uh, we got down there close to the goal line and uh, Kalen went up, got hit, got a vicious hit, came down and got up. Didn't say anything, but gave some mannerisms like, I'm here all day. You can't hurt me. Unfortunately, it penalty. drew a 15 yard penalty. So, as I told Kerry, because I think I called Kerry, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, venting, but I said, you know, the good thing about it, you know, the best thing about it, you know, he, he's a freshman, yeah. and he didn't, he didn't know what he doesn't know. Yeah. But the bad thing about it, he's a freshman, and yeah. he didn't know what he didn't know. But, yeah. you know, at the same time, can, though. Can I stop you right there for a second? Yeah. My daddy told me that a dog never got hit twice by a car. <laughs> that if run out on the road, the car either kill him, so he's never gonna get hit again. Or if he survived, he ain't never gonna get he never gonna get hit again. Right. I want to know as a as a diehard fan of Howard University, all things sports and all things out, that he learned his lesson on that one. Hey, he, he did because in the Delaware State game, right before we scored one of our like I don't know the fourth fifth touchdown, he was running an option. And they, were, they came up on him, and he pitched it, and they clobbered him. I mean, they were right. all over top of him. Right. And I was just waiting for him to, you know, get up and start doing his antics again. He got up, and he ran over to the sideline and celebrated with his teammates. Yeah. So, to me, you know, yeah. you know yeah. fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. And so, I, I think he got it at that point that, you know, when you're a quarterback and you touch the ball 100% of the time, yeah. then you're responsible for it, you know, for the fortunes of a lot of people. So. Yeah. Um, there's a level of maturity that is that he's gained through the games that we played and having leadership like the guys behind because they're all older guys mm -hmm. then uh, when they speak to him you know not only on the field but off the field and other situations then that, that, that bodes to the maturity that, that he's uh, that he's having mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Kerry we've got to talk about um, and we'll come back because got still got a little more football this is homecoming week Morgan the Morgan Bears are coming to town we setting some bear traps. 
<laughs> you know. We got something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, look, a very exciting news about a left-handed point guard that's coming to play for, 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 for the Bison. Can you talk to him? Are you referring to R.J. Cole? R.J. Cole from yes. New Jersey. Yes, yes. yes. R.J. Uh, R.J. was the uh, point guard for St. Anthony's, which is one of the, in, in New Jersey, which is one of the premier uh, programs in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, were, we were lucky to get in on him early. Mm -hmm. um, uh, part of that was because he played on the same AAU team as I, my godson, so I knew him from the fourth grade. Uh -huh. That helped. Okay. Uh, but um, but also too Some the more long term seduction. <laughs> exactly. exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. exactly. <laughs> but also too one of the one of the things that uh, was critical to R.J. coming here, and quite frankly, I we I never used it, or we I should say we coach, or myself never used it in any conversation with his parents or him. Mm. Uh, he was interviewed on television, and he said they asked him, "Well, why'd you choose Howard?" He had you know. 20 offers, sure, you know, including sure. Georgetown sure, and Virginia sure, coming in sure. late. And he said, I chose Howard because in these social times, social uh, and political times, mm -hmm. uh, where there's so much uncertainty, mm -hmm. I thought what better place to be mm -hmm. than Howard, mm -hmm. right? Around people who look like me, right, who I would feel comfortable yeah. with, who are family, yeah. and may espouse many of the same political and social views that I have. And I thought that that was that was just tremendous. Oh, does that does that give me an opportunity to get the microphone to one of the cheerleaders, whichever one of you want to take this? There was recently a huge article in the New York Times, and it talked about the Howard University cheerleading team taking a knee, the entire team taking a knee. I want to ask a couple of questions. Um, what prompted you to do that? We've been kneeling for over a year now when Colin Kaepernick originally started to kneel um, and protest the injustices that black people face across the country for years. Um, we decided to take it upon ourselves. We asked the team, you know, if everybody was comfortable, we wanted to make a stand and support him in his, port in his protest. And this was something that we decided together and something that we still stand behind today. Oh, you know we need your name. <laughs> Say it loud. Um, my name is Alex Jones. I am a junior legal communications major from Monticello, Arkansas. From Arkansas? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> tell me this. What do you see your role as in helping the teams achieve their goal? Um, well, being cheerleaders, um, we're, we're kind of like their, um, we're their cheerleaders. You know, we're their, their um, spirit guides almost. Mm -hmm. Whenever the guys are down, we want to be there. We're right there on the sidelines with them, supporting them right there in their ear. You know, you can do this. You got this. You want to keep going. Because sometimes we might not have the best responses out of the crowd, so we know that we're going to be their sole support um, to continue to keep up uplifting them, keep them encouraged, keep them pushing so that they can accomplish their goal, any goal that they have set forth. So for do you guys still do that cheer? We are the bison. Don't take... You don't do that don't anymore. Don't take no mess. Don't take no mess. I don't, I don't think we do that anymore. I think the alumni. But do you know it? No, I. I so let me tell you what it is. It. <laughs> I want y'all to incorporate this into your chair repertoire. Okay. We are the bison. Okay. Don't take no mess. Okay. Get mad in a minute and jump in your chest. Come on, we'll do it. We'll do it right there. Especially for the football team. <laughs> and I'll tell you what you did. You guys, uh, by taking your stand and showing your commitment to focus on equality by taking that knee. Mm -hmm. You just jumped in the chest of some inequality. Our hats go off to you. Thank you very, so much. Very we appreciate much. the support. My hat goes off Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, Coach, we've got the Morgan Bears coming in. Um, tell us what have you been doing in preparation. you got homecoming week. It's an exciting time with about four billion distractions. <laughs> so what are you doing? It's not like you can take the guys off into the yonder. What are you, what are you doing uh, in particular to prepare for a time when indeed focus is needed but can be so easily lost because of all of the pageantry? Sure. Uh, and I just wanted to echo something that, that Kerry said about recruiting. For us, recruiting is going extremely well. Having young men that see the vision of 
of a place like Howard and the academic opportunities that this place gives is probably could be one of the better recruiting classes Howard has had in a long time. So, you know, that whole atmospheric thing and, and academics and socially what's going on and what's happening in our country, yeah. the coaches that we have, the people that Harry, that, 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 that Kerry has hired. I mean, we got a, the new track coach, the people he's surrounded himself with. Just as a staff, oh, yeah. I, I think there's some all-stars. Yeah. Um, the distractions, it, one of the distractions, we had a pep rally. Um, the other day, and it was it was <laughs> it was awesome. I'm telling you what, we had uh, I was you know we had Will the rapper. Uh, yeah. I was looking for Chance the rapper, Will the rapper. We had we had a bunch of guys, you know. But it was yeah. I mean the 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 energy that the students brought mm -hmm. it it was unbelievable. Our our guys went out on the you know where there's a bird gym, and we talked and we threw some footballs up in the stands. But the energy that the students showed was it was it was fantastic. So you know. The things that are going on now, yeah. that we have to make sure that we, we dedicate a, a, a certain amount of focus on to getting the task done, what Morgan State does offensively, defensively, and special teams-wise. We got practice today in about, in about, you know, about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, you know, all those things are, are, are something that you know, it's, it's inherent to a homecoming weekend. But again, we want to win, and, and we want to prepare to win. Um, Kerry, I, let me come back to you. Um, what can you talk to us about what athletics can do for a college? It's a great question. Uh, and, and that's actually that's that's a part of our mission. Uh, enhancing the university through athletics. That's the first line of our mission. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that, that we focus on is broad-based excellence across all of our sports, mm -hmm. right? So a, a lot of times people talk about, well, you have to perform in the quote-unquote revenue-generating sports, football, mm -hmm. basketball, uh, you know, those are the sports, and, and we do. We think that those, you know, performing in those sports are critical. But we also want to establish a sense of broad-based excellence, mm -hmm. right? That, you know, whether it's the tennis team, the swimming team, the women's lacrosse team, which is only one of two uh, HBCU women, women's lacrosse teams in the country. Our swimming team is the only HBCU uh, swimming team and swimming and diving team in the country. Right. We want to perform across all of those various levels, both ath athletically and academically. And what, that, what we feel that will do is that will garner a sense of pride amongst the student body. Mm -hmm. Uh, it will garner a sense of performance academically amongst the student, student body. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and finally, one of the things I've learned here as, a, as, a, as a, someone who didn't go to an HBCU, right, uh, but when I go out and I speak to alumni and I talk about the, the uh, enhancements we're making in athletics and the progress we're making in athletics, right, one of the things that they always react to is the academic performance, mm -hmm. right? You know, when I say, yeah, you know, well, we won a conference championship in volleyball, yay, All right? And also the volleyball team has a 3.6 G overall cumulative GPA, yeah. yay! You know, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it, it's, it's important that both of the, we're excellent at both of those things, especially at some place like Howard. And then what it'll do if we, a game like the UNLV game, for example, mm -hmm. you know, I would, I would believe that bringing that kind of national notoriety to the university mm -hmm. has to be great yeah. for the school. Yeah. Uh, I've been told by admissions our applications are up 30% over where we were last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and last year, this, as you know, this was one of the biggest incoming class of freshmen we've had in a very long time. Yes. Right, and we have even more applications coming along. I would think, and admissions has said, they think that the UNLV win uh, had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so. Those are the things that we're, we're focusing on in terms of, uh, of us doing our part to enhance this university. Yeah. Coach, we have a minute left. I've been uh, involved with Howard University since I was, came here as a freshman in 1970, so for, for, for 47 years. And I gotta tell you, I feel a sense of foundation building. Uh, we've, they've been some good years, some good teams, but I, I, I feel a sense of a powerhouse emerging. Um, for all of our alumni out there, students, faculty, staff, whatever, tell us what, in, in this last 45 seconds we've got left, 
um, what they can anticipate from Howard University football going forward? Well, obviously, we're looking for the type of young man, a profile young man that wants to, to get the best of both worlds, a, a world-class education, an opportunity to play, you know, for a great staff and for a school where you compete for, and win championships. Um, on the back of our helmets, we celebrate the 1993 championship team. We understand you can't, you can't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. Yes. Um, and so we, we rec recognize things that have happened in the past, but at the same time, there's a, there's a new future, there's a new vision in moving forward for the program to bring honor and integrity to these gentlemen that are back here, that have played here, um, and to you as, as a stakeholder in the university. Dr. Frederick and Kerry Davis and you know, everyone that's involved you know, we want to take this to another level. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Everybody over there, thank you so much for coming. That wraps us for this evening. For more information on this program or any other program produced by WHUT, go to WHUT.org. Goodbye, God bless, and have a great homecoming. This program was produced by WHUT, Howard University Television, and made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.